Okay, hello. So this post is about Markovian approximations for rough volatility models. And this is joint work with one of my PhD supervisors, Christian Bayer. Okay, so if one looks at uh, real world data from uh, stocks uh, and at their applied volatility surfaces, it is well known that these implied volatility surfaces have steepening skews as the time of maturity goes to zero. Uh, so here, for example, is such an implied volatility surface of the Standard & Poor's Index on some day in 2014. And here is the corresponding um, uh, at the money volatility skew. And this skew here satisfies a certain power law, which in this case is a power law with exponents negative 0.4 roughly. So standard diffusion models cannot capture this explosion here. Uh, so instead, one can consider, for example, rough volatility models, uh, which are models of the stock price of this form here. So the stock price S satisfies this stochastic differential equation where V is some Brownian motion and V is uh, some kind of rough fractional process which models the volatility. So in, in the case of the rough Begomi model, which is one such rough volatility model, um, V is essentially just the stochastic exponential of a fractional Brownian motion, WH. WH here is, in this case, a riemann leoville fractional Brownian motion, where K is the fractional kernel uh, defined here. Now, the, the good thing about these rough volatility models is they uh, provide excellent fits to the data. So if you, if you simulate uh, with the, this rough Begomi model, for example, you get a really nice fits. You get this, um, this uh, volatility skew here, you recover it perfectly. Um, however, there are some problems uh, in that the Hurst parameter H you need to use is very, very small. So say around 0 0.1. So rough volatility models, especially the volatility process uh, is uh, certainly not a semi-martingale anymore and not a Markov process. Um, and also, uh, you know, if, if the Hurst parameter is that small, it's, it's really, really rough. So all this together makes uh, both the theoretical analysis of uh, these models and the, um, the numerical simulation of such models incredibly difficult. So if you want to simulate uh, a rough volatility model directly, usually you have very, very slow rates of convergence. So what we do is we consider Markovian approximations of such rough volatility models. Now, so let us first take a step back and consider such stochastic Volterra equations as is written down here. So K is still the fractional kernel from before. And now we have two uh, general functions P and Sigma here. Uh, they should be Lipschitz continuous uh, linear growth, uh, but otherwise they can be essentially arbitrary. Now, the kernel K, the fractional kernel K, uh, is actually completely monotone. So it needs a representation in terms of a Laplace transform. It's here where mu is some positive measure that we know explicitly. Um, now, we can, if we consider for a moment just fractional Brownian motion, so simply the, the convolution of this kernel with Brownian motion. Uh, then we can plug in this representation of K and apply stochastic Fubini to get this representation here. And this integral in the middle, if you look at it, that's really just an ornstein uhlenbeck process with mean reversion theta. So we can see that fractional Brownian motion is just an infinite linear combination of einstein uhlenbeck processes, all driven by the same Brownian motion, but with varying mean reversion parameters. And this is nothing new at all. This uh, was already considered by Kamona and Kutta 24 years ago, uh, who also showed that this process, this family of processes, y theta, 
is actually an infinite dimensional Markov process. Now, um, this, this representation of fractional Brownian motion here is an infinite dimensional Markov process, of course, immediately suggests an idea of approximating fractional Brownian motion by a finite dimensional Markov process, simply by discretizing this integral here, by applying some broader true rule. And in fact, it's completely equivalent to simply uh, discretize the integral of k. So we can just approximate k here as a finite sum of exponential functions by choosing some nodes phi the i and some corresponding weights w i. And this is equivalent to just discretizing this integral here. And by using such an approximation k hat of our original kernel k, we then of course get an approximation of our fractional Brownian motion as a linear combination, a finite linear combination of uh, Markov processes. So uh, we then get uh, um, a Markov, a finite dimensional Markov approximation of fractional Brownian motion. Now, this idea was extended uh, more recently by um, Abiha Bernal Euch and Alfonso Kebaya uh, to more general stochastic Volterra equations, so Volterra equations of this type here. Um, and uh, for example, Alfonso and Kebaya proved that if we replace our kernel k by such a discrete sum of exponentials k hat, and if we consider the solutions v to this uh, differential equation and also the solution v hat where we use k hat instead of k, then the L2 error at the final point can be bounded by the L2 error in the approximation of k hat with k. Uh, so this, uh, this theorem uh, simply reduces the approximation of V to the approximation of K. Of course, a much simpler task. And both um, uh, Alfonso Kepay and Abi Kepay and Del Oich provided broader rules for approximating K. And they both proved that their approximation converged with rates slightly worse than H uh, in the dimension of the Markov process. So the convergence is essentially n to the minus h. But now h is very, very small, just 0 0.1, say. And n is the dimension of the Markov process, the dimension of, um, of a stochastic differential equation you need to solve. So in practice, this convergence is, is uh, usually too slow, and um, it's uh, essentially infeasible in practice. Uh, however, we can do significantly better than that. And uh, the idea is, in a sense, captured in this picture here. So what you see here is, uh, again, just for the fractional Brownian motion, uh, the Ornstein ulenbeck process is uh, y of theta. So all of them here, uh, we have the time axis uh, here and the theta axis here and the values yt of theta here. So in the time axis, uh, this is of course uh, quite rough. It's it's an Ornstein Ulenbeck process, but uh, in theta, this is actually smooth. It's even analytic. Uh, so because the current because here we we have a uh, smooth function of theta, and we are really approximating the integral over theta. Uh, so there is some hope that we can do uh, significantly better by using this regularity uh, in theta here. And this is also what we do. So uh, we, are, uh, we are inspired here by, by an idea that was already carried out by Harms. Um, and we approximate this integral as follows. Uh, by first truncating the integral from zero to infinity to some finite interval from A to B. And then we partition this interval AB into n geometrically spaced intervals. Uh, so if these intervals are called AI, BI, uh, geometrically spaced means that the fraction BI over AI remains constant over I. Um, and this makes sense because, uh, as you see, we, we have an exponentially decaying function here. Uh, so the, the intervals get exponentially less important. So we can also 
let their size grow exponentially. And on each of these n intervals, we apply Gaussian quadrature of level m. Uh, and then also we add another point with a zero with an appropriate weight that we can determine explicitly. Okay, uh, so that's, that's essentially the approximation we use. Now this approximation has four parameters. The parameters are uh, the partition AB, uh, like the, 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 the total interval AB, uh, the number of intervals and the level of the quadrature. Uh, so these are four parameters, and we can now optimize over the choice of these four parameters under the constraint that we want to use a fixed number of points in our approximation. Uh, we perform this optimization both theoretically and numerically, and in both cases, we can determine explicitly what the optimal values of A, B, M, and N are, given the number of points that we use, want to use, and the Hurst parameter. And uh, what we get is an exponential convergence in the square root of n. Uh, so if we choose the correct explicitly known values of a, b, m, and n that were determined theoretically, um, then we uh, have a convergence of the form e to the minus some constant times square root of n. And this constant here is roughly two times the square root of h. And if we use the numerical values, uh, then it, it seems that we can even achieve a bit of a better constant here, like 3.5 times h. And this is, of course, an improvement because the constant is in the exponent here. Um, yeah, and uh, this is also a much, much better convergence rates than the conversion than polynomial convergence of order h that we had uh, previously. We can also see that this approximation works uh, really well in practice by considering some numerical examples. Uh, so let me zoom in here a little bit. Um, so we can consider, for example, the Raf Bagomi model, which was uh, uh, shown before. Uh, so here we have an implied volatility smile for a European call option, and the black line here is uh, the, the actual implied volatility. So if we don't use a Markovian approximation, uh, the dashed lines are the 95% the, uh, confidence interval of the Monte Carlo simulation. And we can see that even for moderate numbers of uh, points and hence moderate dimension of the Markov approximation, we already get a fairly good approximation uh, to this uh, implied volatility curve. So for n equals 16, it's better distinguishable anymore. Uh, similarly, for the rough Heston model, which is not a rough volatility model, uh, we can see that already for n equals 5 or 6, uh, we, we can barely see a difference uh, between the Markovian approximation and the non-Markovian actual process. And this is also, again, a significant improvement uh, to what we had before. So for example, if we use the point sets proposed by Abiger Bea and El Oich, uh, they would need to use about a thousand points to achieve a similar accuracy as we do with six points. Okay, um, so what we see is that um, uh, we have shown that uh, it's possible to approximate uh, rough volatility models with Markov processes, um, even moder in moderate dimensions, and uh, get really good fits to the implied volatility smiles. And of course, having Markov processes is, is uh, much better than uh, such um, rough volatility processes in general. Uh, so we, we hope that this may also help in, um, for example, pricing American options on the rough volatility. Okay, uh, thank you very much. <laughs>